Hello! And thank you for that catch, Lazarus. I, uh... I can't spell, in case you haven't realized that about me yet. But hey, let's go. And oh boy, Stein's Gate, this will be fun. I sure hope so. Uh, Stein's Gate is definitely, uh... An anime that I absolutely love. So, you know. Hopefully this will be pretty good. How's my audio looking, by the way? I didn't have a lot of time to test it, unfortunately. Yeah, you know... I... <laughs> I can't... I'm not good, alright? I wasn't thinking. I just typed it out. And hoped it would be good. Which apparently trying to be wrong, but yeah. Since I, like, have seen the show, I think it's gonna be a little difficult. Your voice is coming in exclusively in the left ear. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's something I can fix myself. If I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I have seen the show, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to like separate what I already know from what I'm experiencing now. But hopefully, that won't be too bad. I'm also ex excited to see what's gonna be different. Hopefully, there'll be like enough that's different or enough that I just simply don't remember that'll be fine. The issue with the screen labs, I've at least. Is it? Can you issue screen labs? That's not an issue I have any idea of things. If it's like exclusively coming to your left ear. Like that's just kinda wild. Or how did you fix it, at least? If you remember. So it might be a little late to restart with you. <laughs> oh, okay. Actually, this thing I found is using the exact mixer that I have. Maybe 
enhanced audio settings. Alright, hold on. How's this? No, I don't think it is your your, your headset, because I just uh, simply typed it in, and I have a, a new mixer, a new audio interface, and somebody had the exact same issue with this, with this uh, exact one. How's it sound now? Because I don't think it would be your headset unless, like, all audio was coming through that one, you know? I suppose I will go ahead and get started while you figure out if it's better or not. Oh, I'm so excited. All right, let's go. Everything was a dream. But that dream was the only thing that was given to me. I'm not listening to it dubbed. I don't think I've watched it. I'm not listening to it dubbed. I don't think I've watched it. いたって正常だここでは真実を語っているんであって断じて中二病の妄想なんかじゃないきっかけはほんの些細なことだとしてもそれが未来の大きな流れを決定づけてしまうこともあるバタフライ効果という言葉を知っているか知らないなら調べるのだそれぐらいの慎重さが求められているのだということを理解しろ俺は慎重じゃなかった自分の若さを分かっている<笑>あいつを失うことになんてならなかった未来をこんな形にしてしまうなんてこともなかった分かるはずがないだろうその瞬間の自分の手に人類全ての運命を決定づけるような重大なターニングポイントのスイッチが握られているなんていうことは分かるはずがないんだ考えても見るがいい普段の人間の知覚は 99% が遮断されているとは自分で思っている以上に愚鈍な生き物なんだよ普段の生活の中に生まれている何気ないことなど気にも留めないし近くしたとしてもすぐに忘れるか脳が処理をしないかのどちらかなんだあの時の俺に言ってやりたいうかつなことをするなと軽率なことをするなと見て見ぬふりをするなともっと注意を払えと時間だっていつでもお前を落とし入れようと手ぐすめ引いているのだと宇宙に始まりはあるか終わりはない無限星にもまた始まりはあるが自らの力を持ってこれでいる有限英知を持つ者こそ Hopefully, they should be fine. I'm going to turn myself up a little bit as well. I should be good at that. 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 Gate, let's go. I'm so hyped for this. Hey, what are you mumbling about? There's no sound from the phone against me right here. It's only silent. I am baking this under sun. Sweat slowly slides down my skin and drops into the ass. Okari! Netteba! Don't you talk in Japanese? Should I? Read the subtitles? Or. Are you guys good? Just. Good. 
a girl is standing in front of me. She calls my name and inquisitive tilt on her head. We are about to infiltrate deep into enemy territory. Yet despite the imminent risk of death, there is no hint of tension in innocent child like me. I cover my phone's mouth and turn to the girl who is standing next to me. How the fuck is that on my I nod and put my phone back in. Still no sound. My voice getting ignored. <clears throat> my contact is flies to maintain silence. The whole area could be bugged. Yeah, this is the problem. The problem is that we need to move on to the Still no response. though. How's this? Once I move the ring with the settings in game, uh, I'm gonna see if I can like bring the voice audio up, you know? But yeah, you're right, the champion. And like I said, once I get him on, I will uh, see if I can just compare the voice up. Let's see, looks like they just want my report. Enter now. It's still too dangerous to waste time talking here anyway. Nakabachi. I opened my eyes wide to match my shock tone. The girl turns toward me in surprise. I sigh, shaking my head as I rub my tongue. <laughs> That's the choice of science game. Roll credits, boys. We got it. El Psy Kangaroo. Let's go. Ah, stop. Speak the parting words, then pocket my cell phone. Stein's gate. Some know it as faith. To others, it is the will of God. You could count on one hand the people in this world aware of its true nature. In any case, we should begin the infiltration. I advance towards Radita, which is just across the street from the train station. Yes, the cicadas are gone. Of course, this is enemy territory. I can't just slow stride in through the front door like an average person. I bypass the elevators and es escalators and head to the 8th floor by the stairwell. But I only make it to the 7th floor before I have to stop and rest. <laughs> the girl, Sheena Mayuri, immediately resumes our conversation. She followed me all the way here and she isn't even short of breath. I, on the other hand, am gasping for air with my hands on my knees. 
Who would have thought an eight-story building would be so tall? Yes. Eight stories, my man. I turned to Mayuri while wiping the sweat off my brow. Kikuna. Sore ga Mayuri no tame de mo aru. The classic line. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Oh, not to like nitpick everything. But damn, she should face the camera away. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I know you're right. I should like change that some. I wasn't sure where everything was gonna be, so I was kind of hoping to experiment a little bit with where to place the cam. That is a good call. Because the two corners makes it a little, little iffy. Let me fix that real quick. Chat box is a little spot, but hopefully it'll be fine here. Boom. Magic. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Mayuri is too innocent. Mayuri smiles happily and doesn't pry any further. Thanks, Mayuri. As always, she is quick to understand my position. We've known each other since we were both little. Mayuri is 16, two years younger than me, so she's more like a little sister than a typical childhood friend. I've been looking out for her as long as I can remember. I used to hope that Mayuri might become the key to Stein's gate, but now I've reconsidered. I don't want that terrible fate for her. She should live a normal life. That is my present wish. We continue to the 8th floor and enter the assembly hall. In front of us stands a cheap looking stage with a podium and a sign reading, Dr. Nakabachi's Time Machine Press Conference. Mayuri insists on calling me Okari, but it's neither my real name nor my code name. It's just one of those annoying nicknames people use. Mayuri, would, should I read out when they talk in Japanese, like the English sub, or just like let you guys hear it in the Japanese? I'm not like too sure. I I didn't realize that this was gonna be uh, in Japanese. I thought it was gonna be in English. I probably should have looked into that first time. それは昔の話だ。今の俺は法院教魔。世界中の秘密組織から狙われる狂気のマッドサイエンティストだ。<笑><笑> I'm not sure if I could do the laugh though. That was pretty diabolical. だって難しくて覚えられないし。秘密教魔。In any case, Hyoin Kiyom is my true name. Big red text, so you know. I'm probably either, but ensure so everyone can follow me if you need it. That's true. <coughs> and besides, it doesn't even sound like Okabe Rintaro. You're weird. <laughs> Cease your foolish laughter. Okabe Rintaro may be my real name, but I have rejected it, for it is stupid. And so I also hate the deri derivative, Okari. Come on, it sounds like that elf boy's blue pipe thing. What does that mean? Elf boy's blue pipe thing? What does that mean? So, Okarin, can I ask you something? In one ear and out the other. She's been calling me that for five years now, so maybe it's time to give up. Yeah, probably. What are you doing here? Wait, you followed me here without knowing why? Yeah. 
She nods with a drop in her smile. We're here for Dr. Nokabachi's press conference. We're standing in the assembly hall on the 8th floor of Karate Khan. It is here that the conference will be held. Dr. Nakabachi is an inventor. He appears on TV from time to time and has a few patents under his belt, but mostly he is treated as a curiosity. That's a good point, whatever. My ear is right. Ooh, me and Hyoin. Similar brains, big, big scientist brains, guys, I'm telling you. I've scanned the entire hall, but no one who looks like a reputable reporter or him. Well, but there's no one. I can't read either. There are only about ten of us standing in the hall, including me. Considering Nakabachi's moderate media presence and the fact that he claims to have invented a time machine, I would have expected more. <laughs> Could this be the organization working its twisted influence? I twist my lips into a sneer. I thought that Nakabachi was like me, a scientist fighting to overthrow the organization. But this press conference suggests other motives at work. Our enemies won't miss this chance. I prefer not to get wrapped up in this mess. Nevertheless, I'm interested in what he has to say. That's why I'm here, blowing an afternoon of my precious summer holiday. My ear ponders my utterance for a while before finally turning her head. Is it his birthday too? I let out a sigh. My ear is known to not only make bad jokes, but to laugh at them too. She's always been special. Keep your gun, I suspect this won't be a normal comfort. Oh shit. I didn't even finish my sentence. Are we under attack? Are they trying to fry our brains with the electromagnetic waves? Oh shit. Dust falls from the ceiling as the floor shakes. We're definitely under attack. It's coming from above, but we're on the top floor. All that's above is the roof. Earthquake? Is it a magnitude 2? What's this magnitude 2? No time to deal with my earthquake. Something's not right about this. I bolt out of the conference hall and run up the stairs to the roof, ignoring the no trespassing signs on my way. The door is open. Upon closer inspection, I realize that the lock is broken. What are those parts? I open the door and see a billowing, billowing cloud of black smoke. There's some kind of phosphor dust sparkling in the air. An explosion? I can't believe it. Was there really an explosion? My heart's racing. Damn, I don't know what to do. Should I run away? But why an explosion? Terrorists? No, that doesn't fit. I mean, how do you explain that? Or that? Yeah, what is that? What? A strange machine is sitting in the middle of the roof. It's huge, maybe three meters tall, and it looks kind of like a satellite. Did that thing cause the shaking just now? Who put it here? Was it Dr. Nakabachi? Is this part of his presentation? Impossible. 
if, the, if that were the case, how the hell would he get it up here? My head is bursting with questions. As I search for the courage to approach the machine, a throng of reporters and building staffs burst into the rooftop. They look just as confused as I am. Please stay back, everybody. And then a woman who I assume is a staff member appears to wave his back. Conference will proceed as scheduled. Is she trying to hide something? Her response was unusually quick, almost like she's trying to keep me away from that device. I've got noise. No conspiracies. And this stinks of cover. What are they hiding? What was that explosion? I want to know, but I shouldn't risk it any closer. I turn and leave. But not because I'm scared or anything like that. Yeah, definitely not. Staff members lead all of us back to the 8th floor. My Yuri is nowhere to be seen. She's not in the event hall either. I find her on the 7th floor. New tip. Several capsule toys... Several capsule toy machines are lined up next to a plate, reading birthplace of a Japanese PC. I just got $200. Hey, congratulations, Dexy. $200 island. I think that officially puts me in last place as far as, as, far as I level. Feels bad. But then again, here I am playing Steins Gate instead of you know, <laughs> pushing content. But congratulations. Was it the the wrists? Did you finally get good bracers? She's gazing upon them with a wistful look. Wistful. I breathe a sigh of relief and take out my phone. Now I got the best flight home. Oh, my God. oh congratulations! Nice. Still works. Wasn't bracers, but it's still best in the slot, so. Hell yeah. I breathe a sigh of relief, then take out my phone. What up? It's me. I've got a bad feeling about this. Something's happening. I have no idea what it is. Yeah, I know. Don't worry. I won't do anything to jeopardize this. L. Sai Kung. After I speak the words hang up, I'm able to wipe the sweat from my forehead. My sweat is cold. Same, bro. I sweat really cold sweat. It's weird. Half of me hopes something will happen. The other half fears the same thing. So both of his halves fear that something will happen. Just one big ball of fear. I put away my phone and look back at my area. She's still staring at those capsule toys. She doesn't seem to be worried about the explosion at all. I can't decide if she's level-headed or just airheaded. What are you doing? I'm gonna go ahead and say airheaded. She really wanted an Oopa. Just as I thought. Too innocent. Mayuri points to a capsule machine. The sign on the front says, Ryanet Kakuru, 3D character doll series. They are kind of cute, you gotta admit. Ryanet Kakuru is a popular anime series with its own cards game spinoff. Ryanet Axis Battles. They even hold international tournaments. Upa is the series' mascot character. It resembles an elliptical egg with limbs sticking out like some kind of deformed dog. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that. Oh, I don't have a mouse to like, point stuff around. You can kind of see it there. It's what they would call an ugly cute character. High school girls find these creatures adorable for some reason. Last year, an ugly frog character was the rage. Its name, it, uh, its name escapes me, though. I can't guarantee you'll get an Upa, though. Mayuri gives me a troubled smile. 
マユシは今百円玉を切らしちゃっているのです。But my Yushi is all out of one hundred yen coins. My Yushi is what my Yuri calls herself sometimes. According to her, it's supposed to have a star at the end. My Yushi star. Gotta add that little extra pizzazz, you know. But who really cares? So can I borrow 100 yen, please? She holds her hands out with a look like a begging puppy. Looks like she was playing this from the very beginning. Well, at least she didn't say give me. She did ask nicely. <laughs> Do you think it's that easy, Mayuri? You'll get no money from me. Instead, I'll show you just how harsh life really is. I pull out a 100 yen coin, set into the machine slot, and spin the lever. I don't know why I, I read that one out. I open the capsule and take out the contents. Mayuri leans forward, eagerly, uh, leans forward eagerly to see what I got. It's an upa, and it's metal, a metal upa. Is it rare? Super rare, hell yeah, let's go. While well, I examine the metal Upa, a boy who is watching us tries to slug on the same ride at machine. Ah, uh, Upa da. This poor boy. Only a normal Upa. After watching us pull super rare. He looks at my metal Upa in resentment. Trying to fight? I turn to see my eerie sparkling eyes also fixed on the Upa. Hey, high school girl, you're acting like a little kid. <laughs> I give this metal creature to you, Mayuri. It's Tara sucks to be that kid. <laughs> yeah, it does. That's what he gets for buying into loot boxes. The unfortunate part is I can say I've been there. <laughs> Honestly, I don't want it. Really? Are you sure, Okarin? The name's Hyoin Kiyoma. <laughs> Thank you, Okarin. <coughs> Is she just doing it on purpose? Thank you all for coming to Dr. Nakabachi's Time Machine press conference. I hear the announcement from the four above. Sounds like they're starting. I head to the stairs. Mayuri doesn't follow. Yukuzo, Mayuri. Let's go, Mayuri. Uh, wait, wait. Just a second. I gotta write my name. She's preoccupied with the metal upa. I go on ahead. So let's first introduce ourselves. Hatsumeika. Without further ado, I am pleased to introduce the inventor, Dr. Nakabachi. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Dr. Nakabachi, everybody. That is the saddest round of applause. Dr. Nakabachi enters to sparse applause. He walks up to the podium. Uh, hello? Did the game freeze? Uh, 
Hello, game? You okay? He walks to the podium. There we go. Haha, <laughs> fixed it. He's already wearing a frown for some reason. I can feel his irritation from here. Dr. Nakabachi. I am Dr. Nakabachi. Thank you all for coming. Nakabachi takes the microphone and begins to speak. His voice brimming with confidence. Actually, can I bring up a... Alright, that's not what I wanted. I was trying to see if I could bring up a menu. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to begin with my theory of time travel. The greatest scientific breakthrough of the century. Time machine? He really built the time machine? Mayuri appears after writing her name on the metal upa. She's a bit late in more ways than one. She's a bit late in more ways than one. What did she think a time machine presentation would be about? I take another look around the room. There are about two hundred, uh, 20 people now, including us, but still no media presence to speak of. So this is the extent of Nakabachi's fame. No one believes that he invented a time machine. I was interested in what he had to say, true, but my expectations were no higher than the rest of the onlookers. And a good thing they weren't. As he proceeds to explain his time machine design, my curiosity quickly turns to disappointment, then anger. <laughs> Doctor! My roar silences Nakabachi and draws the eye of every person in the room. Do you take us for fools? Who the hell are you? <laughs> who the hell am I? Someone who knows you for a fraud. That's who. You stole your theory from John Teeter, and you call yourself an inventor? So someone throw this man out. You're the one who should, who should throw out, Doctor. Have you no shame? You have the right to call yourself an inventor. You have no right to call yourself an inventor. Shut your mouth, you little pest. Just then, someone grabs my arm from behind. Quite convinced it's an official here to throw me out, I turn around to glare him down. <laughs> Unhand me, you! Huh? <sighs> That's not someone who looks like an official here. It's a girl about my age. Her intense stare seems to challenge me. I take a step back. Her face looks somehow familiar. Where have I seen her before? Oh. Ah. We haven't met, but I know her face. It's Makisei Kurisu. A few days ago, my friend Daru showed me a magazine article titled, Girl Genius Gives Lecture in Akihabara. The article was about a 17-year-old girl who had just graduated from American University. Her thesis was even published in a major scientific journal. Kurisu equals Makase. <laughs> girl genius, Makase Kurisu. I recognize the stubborn looking girl from her photograph. I wonder what this actually says. Girl Kurisu. Kurisu Makase announced surprising thesis in the Far Eastern Island Nation. This thesis, even if it is impossible, each man's making to data is possible if it's making to each man's. Did I read that wrong or is that actually how it's read? Even if it is impossible, each man's making to data is possible if it's making each man's memory data. 
The possibility is bold and it discusses it in detail. The research and study or that credibility is very high. No, there's just legitimate errors and typos in that article. Which they probably didn't expect people to read, so I guess I can't really say much about that. That's just how people. even wearing the exact same scowl. She does look like she's scowling. What business could such a genius have with me? She takes a quick look around the room, then turns back to me with a stern expression. Could you come with me for a moment? What's with the attitude? She's obviously not staff, and there's no way that Maki that the Maki Curiosity would be working with someone like Dr. Nakabachi. Yeah, that sentence is a little wild. Thank God. <laughs> I couldn't tell if I was just going big dumb or if it was the article. But that's good. No, it wasn't just me. Which means no. Kisama, Kikan no Ningenka. You're with the organization? Uh huh? Uh huh? <laughs> if their tendrils have gone this far, then I've made a grave mistake. Stop fooling around and come with me. <laughs> My outburst has already attracted too much attention. Probably lost in translation sort of thing. Yeah, probably. Nakabachi particularly looks like he wants to rip my head off. It must be mortifying to be exposed to the fraud by a bright young man like myself. Anyway, I mustn't draw any more attention to myself. If the organization gets wind of my presence here, it could endanger my Yuri. To say nothing of these ignorant civilians. I let Makise Kurisu lead me out the assembly hall. True, I sure to notice. What will your superior say then? What are you talking about? She glares at me, quite fiercely at that. Attractive though she may be, there is no innocence in her eyes. She's staring straight daggers. A beautiful agent, unmatched in cruelty. My heart beats in exhilaration from the danger. Looks like chaos really does get my blood pumping. <laughs> I just need to ask you something. What makes you think I'll answer? I know how the organization operates. What's with this organization stuff? Instead of answering, I take out my phone and put it to my ear. It's me. It's me. I've been caught by an organization agent. Yes, it's Makise Kirisu. She's a dangerous one. No, it's fine. I'll find a way to. <laughs> Curiously suddenly snatches the phone from my hand. What skill? I didn't have the time to react. What are you doing? Huh? Your phone's off. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Her eyes pierce deep into my soul. I quickly look away. She is good. Is she trying to attack my sense of identity in order to cause a mental break? Recover. This isn't enough to sway me. You're techniques don't work on me, but I'll tell you anyway. That's no ordinary phone. It's designed to deactivate the moment it leaves my hand. <laughs> Such measures are necessary to maintain secrecy. I know things that could get me killed. 
I quickly retrieved my phone and wiped the cold sweat off my forehead. Whew, that was close. So, so you talk to yourself. <coughs> this is bad. Ordinary methods don't work on Makase Kurisu, the genius girl. On the contrary, she is the one psyching me out. Damn, looks like I'll have to make a tactical retreat. If I, ca if I can just find an opening. Suddenly, Kurisu steps up to me with a serious expression. She stares right at me. Her huge eyes blazing with the strength of will. With strength of will. Okay. Such fire. I can't look away. Could someone with such pure eyes really be an organization agent? What were you trying to tell me earlier? Earlier? What are you talking about? About 15 minutes ago, before the conference started. Nonsense. This is the first time we've met. I was with my Yuri on that Upa toy 15 minutes ago. You were trying to tell me something, right? You looked really upset. Is this a trap? It does seem like one of those one of the organization's dirty tricks. Tricky, tricky organization. The game's doing nothing again. But would this girl do something that underhanded? You looked like you were going to start crying any second. Why? Have we met before? If I didn't know how this goes, I'd be questioning if this actually is actually a Twitch saving all these kinds of music. What? Question if this is actually a Twitch save game. I don't I don't know I don't know what that means. But yeah, they are talking about eyes a lot, aren't they? Why have you met before? She seems sincere. And that makes her even more suspicious. If I didn't know this goes, I'd be questioning if this was actually a tw oh, a Twitch safe game. Yeah. <laughs> it did almost start to sound like a like a fanfic briefly. That's right. Don't let her beauty fool you. Real sensual. She's a cold, calculating secret agent. If I show the slightest vulnerability, I'm done for. And how do you know my name? My knowledge has no limits. I'm a mad scientist, after all. Genius girl, our next meeting shall be as enemies. Uh -huh. That's a fair reaction. <laughs> Farewell. <Whoa. laughs> and then we bravely ran away. <laughs> I spin around and take off down the stairs, ignoring her call to stop. Like I'd listen to the enemy. Damn the organization. They must be serious if they're sending agents in like her. I run all the way down to the fourth floor and check behind me. Once I'm convinced Makise Kurisu is not tailing me, I sigh while ripping my temples. But I can't let them capture me yet. Well then, what do I do now? My mission was to attend the conference and evaluate Dr. Nakabachi's research. Now that I know he's a fraud, there's no real point in going back. I guess I'll just go home. But wait, aren't I forgetting something important? Let's see, now what was it? 
I mean, we did kind of leave Mayuri back there. <laughs> I wonder if that's what he's realizing. Yep. Damn, I left Mayuri behind. I knew she'd be a liability. Yeah, she's a liability when we just literally ran away. I shouldn't have brought her along. I was trying to prioritize her safety, but got caught careless. I'll try calling her first. If she's alright, I can just have her meet me here. With that thought in mind, I take out my phone and I turn it on. I got so used to Steins Gate Zero. It's such a different different personality. It really is. It really is. I after I do this, like after I play through this, I'm I want to play through Steins Gate Zero too. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, such a it's wildly different. It rings just as I do. Mm -hmm. Hmm, an email. It's not just a regular email. There's a video attached. And it's from an unknown address. I open the video file with some trepidation. Mm. Huh? There's nothing but noise. Is this a prank? Or some sort of Makise Kurisu style attack? Maybe the noise is some sort of make people go crazy frequency. No, wait. I don't remember her giving her my mail address, so I'm probably just thinking too hard. He's got a big brain. Sometimes you just think too hard. I curse myself for being gullible enough to play the video. I have more pressing matters to deal with anyway. I stop the video and call Mayuri's phone from my address book. Mayuri. Not yeah, enough. Mayuri. Why won't you pick up? Looks like I'll have to go back to the assembly hall. But things will get messy if I bump heads with Makise Kurisu again. <gasps> Wait, don't tell me. Makise Kurisu. Did that Mayuri famous hotel Saka? kidnap Mayuri? Honore. Damn you! Is this how the organization operates? <laughs> Leaving without Mayuri isn't an option. Call me over protective, but she's like a little sister to me, and there's a very real danger that she might wander off somewhere at the moment I let her out of my sight. Mayuri has always been like that. I never know if she'll be there when I turn to look. In a sense, that's why I became Hyowin Kiyoma. I have to go back for her. The thought of climbing back up the eighth floor is depressing, but I have no choice. Actually, Lazarus, you've played through some of the, the, the visual level, right? Is there like any actual like interaction? Like things that we could do as a player? Other than just like hit enter. If you like play to do some chunk into it. I don't know how bad this delay is. So I don't know how long to sit here and wait for a real while. <laughs> when I get back to the assembly hall, Dr. Nakabachi's conference has just finished. Nobody's on stage, and the phony inventor has already left. The 20 something or so members of the audience are starting to pack up. I soon find Mayuri. She's in the corner looking lost. Well, at least she wasn't kidnapped. Even better, I don't see Makise Kurisu anywhere. <laughs> Looks like I scared her off. So be it. I'll let her go this time. Still, 
I keep my eyes peeled as, as I run up to Mayuri. Mayuri, why didn't Mayuri, why didn't you pick up? We're leaving. Is she I bet that jealous kid stole it. My metal Ufa ran away. She turns to me with a forlorn expression. Ran away? What is it? What? It's alive? That's a little too hard to believe. I think I dropped it. I see. So she's looking for it. Not like it really matters. Forget about it. You can always get another one. No way. But it looks like sell upwards of 10,000 yen online. You know? No. Wait. What? That toy was worth that much? Think, Mayuri. Where did you drop it? I don't know. I'm looking. And even if we find it, you can't sell it, okay? Then what's the point? <laughs> that 10,000 yen will fund my research. I said you can't sell it. It even has Mayushi's name on it. Dang, she got us there. Thus begins our search for the metal Upa. Upa, Upa, come out, come out, wherever you are. Mayuri tries calling its name. I don't know if she truly expects a response. By the way, Tuturu is Mayuri's catchphrase. It means... Actually, I've never bothered to ask what it means. Anyway, the metal Upa is nowhere to be found. Maybe she didn't drop it in the assembly hall, but on the seventh floor landing near the capsule toy machines. Another possibility is someone with an eye for rare items pilfered it. Just imagining the smug on that the smug grin on that person's face makes me writhe with envy. What kind of a man steals a helpless girl's toy? Is there nothing in his heart but lust for money? Says the man who wants to sell it. Yeah, see? Sounds like you, Okarin. Whoa. Wasn't expecting that from Mayuri. <laughs> oh. That doesn't sound good. <gasps> what, what was that? Was that a scream? That didn't sound like a scream. That sounded like a muffled yell I think so only the presenter and a few other people are left in the assembly hall including Mayuri and me less than half of the audience remains everyone looks at each other anxiously startled by the scream even I cannot suppress a shiver First the explosion from the roof, now this. What's going on here? Mayuri squeezes my hand tight. Mayuri, here. Stay here, Mayuri. I take a deep breath, prepare myself, and head in the direction of the scream. Maybe it's another organization trick. The echoes lead me down a dark, empty hallway on the same floor. I'm pretty sure it came from around that corner. I crouch and turn the corner slowly, keeping my eyes and ears peeled for any sign of danger. And there, at the end of the passage, I see it. There's something on the ground. No, someone. Motionless. Who is it? 
The clothes are familiar. It can't be. Ooh, big red. Oh, hey, we get to see Hyoin. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and a dead Maki Sekirisu. Her face is turned away, but I know it's her. I wonder if the red hair gave it away. The impertinent genius girl I just fought with 10 minutes ago is now face down in a pool of bright red blood. She's dead. <laughs> no. But why? Suddenly I realize I'm shaking. I want to run. Run away. I shouldn't have come. This is wrong. Someone killed Makise Kurisu. There's no other explanation. Who would do such a thing? There's no one else here. <laughs> Run away! I twist around in shock. Some other men have followed me. And every one of them is ghastly pale. They must have seen the body. Call the police! A man cries out in panic. At this, everyone else starts screaming and running away. I follow them, of course. There's absolutely no reason to stay here. Concern for Makise Kurisu is superseded by my instinctive urge to flee. When I get back to the assembly hall, my area is waiting for me, with tears in her eyes. What happened, Ocarina? We're leaving. I grab my ears, hand, and run. I race down the stairs, trying to drive the image of Kurisu's dead body from my mind. But I can't. The redness of her blood is burned into my mind, more than the slight of the body itself. That was my first time seeing a dead body. Is this what it's like? When I realized that she was dead, I felt chilling terror and a surge of nausea. Nausea. But that was all I felt. Fear and disgust. Shouldn't there be something more? I guess I just didn't know her that well. I mean, I feel like fear and nausea are like decent feelings to feel in that situation. I finally stop once we get to the main street, Chuodori. My chest pounds, my breathing labored from running down the stairs at full speed. Hey, what happened? You look really pale. Mayuri doesn't seem to comprehend the situation. I guess it's because she didn't see the body. She's not even breathing hard. She looks slow, but she's actually pretty fast on her feet. Someone died. I take several deep breaths. The color of that blood still stains my brain. But I've calmed down a bit. Makise Kurisu is dead. And I don't know who the killer is. Oh boy, we about to hunt that killer. Is this murder mystery? I don't. Is Steins Gate murder mystery? I don't think so. Huh. I didn't even read that. Hello? Sirens in the distance. I guess an ambulance should, will be here soon. Oh, is that what I'm doing? Do I sometimes hit shift? I bet I do. I bet I'm stupid. Then the police will arrive and this area will become a crime scene. But for now, the crowds milling through Akihabara have no idea what has happened. It keeps telling me I got these new tips, but like it won't let me like do anything with them, you know? And we haven't like been shown a menu or anything, so I'm a little confused. Everyone is going about their business as usual. The never-ending search for electronics, moe, and porn. 
Just another day in Akihabara. I take my phone out of my pocket, perhaps out of reflex. I'm not sure what I plan to, plan to do with it. Oh, I know. My friend Daru. I'll tell him what happened just now, since he knows about Makase Kirisu. I suppose it might be disrespectful to the, to the victim. But my adrenaline is pumping. I can't make calm decisions after witnessing something like that firsthand. That's how humans are, after all. We're not as special as we like to believe. At the end of the day, we're nothing but dirty, slime-like flesh. Our souls fester like semen left to rot in the womb. I don't remember lines like this in the original one. <laughs> F's with chat for Kurisu. Yeah. Rest in peace, Makise. Kurisu. She was only a best girl for, you know, a couple of lines, but she was best girl for a time. That's how we humans are. While wallowing in a bout of angst, I begin to type my phone. On my phone. <laughs> Title. Trouble. Someone stabbed Makase Kurisu. Looked bad. Hope she's okay. <laughs> no. Hope she's okay. That has to be a translation error. I refuse to believe. He's like, wow, yeah, I saw someone get stabbed and die. Hope she's okay. Uh, that has to be a translation issue. <laughs> he... <laughs> He's already said several times, she's dead. I, I witnessed a murder. Now he's like, looks real bad. <laughs> Hope she'll recover. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know if she was stabbed. That just seemed like the most logical explanation given the amount of blood and the absence of a gunshot. On the other hand, I didn't write that she was dead. Even though, oh, she, oh, okay. So... I'm in the wrong here, <laughs> because I assumed things before we got all the information, even though I'm pretty sure she was. Okay. I can't exactly explain why I didn't. If I had to say, I guess I felt like writing it down would set it in stone. It might make me feel guilty as well. The thought brings a smirk to my face. It's not like I'm the one who killed her. Why should I feel guilty? I just saw someone's death up close, and only a few minutes later, I'm smiling. Am I really that cruel and cold? Well, I am a fiendish mad scientist, so it suits me. Get well soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you just got stabbed and killed, Makise, but, you know, get well soon, hearts. Google says I opens the system menu, does it really? Not right now. Maybe I just haven't unlocked the menu. Like, maybe it wants us to, like, get through, like, an intro. And then it'll be like, hey, here's the whole game. I finish typing and place my thumb over the send button. And then I press down. Sending. One. Oh, one. Yeah, I can I can read good. I am a, I am a very good reader. That's why I'm playing a vision lover right now. My reading's so good. One does it. Oh, this is what mods are for. Can I turn up volume in any way? It doesn't look like it now. I do want to turn message speed up a little bit faster. So that way I can read like. As things are coming, you know. Help, title menu, close menu, exit game. Hmm. Was the tips list literally just like the organization? The organization Chunipio <laughs> is the organization. Nothing more, nothing less. It's a f its formal name is something else, 
but even uttering that name is a death wish. For that reason, all those who know of the existence simply call it the organization. Okay. More Trinibia. A lot of this is just Trinibia. Okay, that's cool. Load, save, quick load, quick save. I'm going to talk quick save just because. You never know. Thank you. Not I won. Okay, yeah. My bad. Send in. Daru trouble. Whoa. No. Does that mean something just happened? What? What was that? Wait. Look around. They're gone. Summer break. Noon. The busiest street in town. For quick access, F8 is quick save, F7 is quick load. But if you get those mixed up, you're going to have a bad time. Oh, yeah. I'm just going <laughs> to open up the menu like a normie. Just now, thousands of pedestrians vanish into thin air. Is this a dream? Am I hallucinating? I don't know. But they're gone. I saw them vanish with my own two eyes. There they are, back in the eyes. Those eyes, whose are they? I stand petrified, speechless, and alone in the empty street. Desperate to find someone, anyone, I look up. And there, at the top of Radicon, Sticking out from the 8th floor event hall we just were. Sticking out. Oh, shoot. That was not crashed the last time we saw that. That was safely landed on top. Hmm? Oh, are we getting the cutscene? Oh, are we getting the intro? <laughs> Cannot even read it. Oh, hey. This sounds like the same artist who did the intro to the That's really cool that they kept using. Her voice like fits times I can't wait to play Steins Gate Zero after this, and then after that, play more oh. of the Science Adventure series. Hey, you. Can you see us? Well, this is getting really meta. <laughs> yes, Rintaro, I can see you. Why won't you answer? I'm asking you a question. Yes, you on the other side of the monitor. Boy. Boy. I did answer. You're being seen. <laughs> Your silence only strengthens my hypothesis. 
I suppose that. From your perspective, it appears that we are the ones inside the monitor. <laughs> That's where you were wrong. I don't know. I kind of had to install you onto my computer, Mr. Rintaro. For your reality is nothing but lies and shadows. Naturally, that includes you too. True reality is on this side of the screen. Don't believe me. I don't blame you. Few are those who can handle the truth. But no matter, I shall speak in simple terms. Easy enough for even you to understand. I hit shift. First, this is the future gadget laboratory located in Akihabara District. We call it simply Lab. Very obvious Our purpose is to shatter the system and plunge the world into chaos. Really? You shouldn't do bad things, Okarin. Quiet. I'm a mad scientist, remember? From the station, head down until you reach and then take a left onto Kuramebashi Dori in the alley before the traffic light. You'll find the run down. Oyama building. Oyama? Yeah, Oyama building. The lab is on the second floor. No, no. I think he called you dummy. Huh? I'll sh I think he did call me dummy. On the first floor is where. On the first floor is a store of evil repute called the Brawn Tube Workshop. You can't miss it. Of all things, can you imagine? Even in the heart of Akihabara's electric town, the demand for CRT is practically non-existent. But the proprietor of Bronze Tenoji, is also the owner of the building. That's how he can afford to maintain his ridiculously niche hobby. His hobby shop, even as land value, continues to rise. So you guys are maintaining this entire operation. This entire operation. He may seem a rough sort, but he was no match for my charisma. Now the entire second floor is mine for next to nothing. <laughs> I digress. The future gadget laboratory is currently experiencing a severe shortage of manpower. We welcome dedicated scientists from all fields to apply. At present, our researchers are. We've got to say lab mems, not researchers. Our lab members, laboratory members are three. Laboratory I am the founder of the Future Gadget Lab. Lab mem, <laughs> Future Gadget mem, Future Gadget Lab. Lab member number 001, the insane mad scientist, Hyowin Kiyoma. Okarin is cuter, though. Next, we have our resident cosplayer and only female member, Lab Mem 002, Shina Mayuri. 
。まゆしーです。だだ切るんじゃなくて作るのが趣味だよ。Call me まゆしー。Where's the star? It's my Yushi star. I like making costumes more than wearing them. Saigoni. Super Haka. And last, Labomen number zero zero some super Hashida Eterda. Lab member double o three. Hashida Eteru. Super Haka, the Obunayo. Super Haka, that don't you me that? It's Super Hacker. Duh. Son now, whatever son in the Kosen Sariru. Here at the Future Gadget Laboratory, we devote ourselves to the art of invention. For details, see our lab's homepage. Our top priority, of course, is to develop weapons for war with the Tark Dominion. But that research has spawned a number of offshoot inventions. In fact, that's all it spawned. So basically, they haven't done、uh, you know, jack all. As far as building weapons for the Dark Dominion, our arsenal of future gadgets is up to eight. Gadgets is up to eight. But this is just the beginning. I have a total of 108 inventions to create. Mm -hmm. Like in that tennis manga, right? I get it. No, it's the number of earthly desires in mortals, you at channel junkie. And I thought I told you not to interrupt me while I'm talking. I'm sorry, Rintaro. I'm trying to read the subtitles, okay? Oh, he was talking to Eter. I did not notice that. Man. Oopsie. Yeah, I wouldn't even.、Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to interrupt you talking to yourself. Excuse me, Tori. I'm not talking to myself. I'm not talking to myself. I'm not talking to the person behind the monitor. I'm not talking to myself. Ah, he just grinned. No, they caught me. How did they know? What are you grinning about? Damn you. We don't even exist outside that monitor. Bitch, fight me. Just say, don't look at me. Alright, oh, Itario says that. Don't look at me, Rintaro. I don't think that's gonna work. It appears our attempt to communicate have failed. It's sad to see someone so deeply in denial of reality. That's what you get from not wearing a mask. Shoot, you're right. I should have been wearing a mask the entire time. Such an awful influence, guys. I'm so sorry. Man, how could I have done this? How could I have done this? Maybe they think we're in the game. You are in the game. This is a game, Mayuri, and you're in it. A little visual novel. I, I, guess. I doubt it's even occurred to them. You tip 2D girls. But aren't your 2D girlfriends the same way? Ooh, Itaru, they got you. That's different. Those girls are my wives. Gotta get them waifus, homie. I understand the hustle. Nobody cares about your, your harem. But but my Yushi is touched upon a very interesting theme, you know? What if we're actually just characters in the game? Anyway, we can know for sure. Oh, anyway, we can know for sure? Just listen to me, dude, I'm telling you. No. Come on. Man, the damn shift button. Such questions are meaningless. Our time is better spent thinking of ways to destroy the system. 
Nice tune to be, yo, bro. I step back from the monitor. Ah. So that's us. Or me, actually, I should say. Uh, hope you guys like this selfie. I, I really went out to, you know, look nice for it, so, you know, good vibes only. Displayed on the screen is the ugly cute character, Alpaca Man. This is a game called Alpaca Man 2, where you speak to Alpaca Man via microphone and watch him react. The game exploded in popularity when it was released 10 years ago, but personally, I only find the ugly part of ugly cute to be true. I'm Lydia. I bought it yesterday. 500 yen used, headset included. It's a good deal. I turned to Dari with a menacing glare. Shut it, hacker. I'm no Chunibyo patient. I sweep my hair back and flash a devilish grin. That is very true to be you. That's your character's name, right? Oh, darling. Your communication skills are beyond repair. I'll have you know, I go to a ton of offline meets, and I'm always the life of the party. This fat, bespectral guy is my brother in arms and right hand man, Hashida Itaru, nicknamed Daru. He's a hardcore talker. You can always find him in front of the computer playing games and watching anime. Yikes, at me! He has 2D wives on whom he cheats with 3D maids. <laughs> I don't agree with his preferences, but to him, everything's fine as long as it's moe. He's the reliable and skilled partner who brings my ideas to fruition. Despite his instance that software is his forte, he shows remarkable aptitude with hardware as well. He's just the computer guy. Ow, the needle bit my finger. Over here, nursing a prickled finger, we have Sheena Mayuri, a 16-year-old high school student. If you can believe it. I've known her since we were both small. Just little small things. She's also an Otaku. Nowhere near Darwin's level though. This ditzy girl is in charge of the lab's official costume division. For what? And today she's working on costumes for her usual, not her usual, leisurely pace. So she only works for costumes for women, and she's the only woman. So she just makes herself costumes. That is a really good deal. Why does the future gadget laboratory need costumes for women? It doesn't. The truth is that my area is completely useless. Hey, at least somebody in the future gadget lab is going to look good and have a nice uniform. Still, there's no way I would ever kick her out. After all, she was the first one to join the future gadget laboratory. I still remember the day Mayuri first came to the lab. It was spring. She said to me, Whoa, Mayushi is Okarin's hostage. I belong here. Well, is it still kidnapping if it's consensual? Huh. Well, that certainly was cryptic. So. Oof, F in chat from Mayuri's job. Hey, dude, she's got it made. I'd say she's getting paid to, like, do that, but I, I don't think she's getting paid for it. So, you know. But her offer was my salvation. For she was the first one to join me on my magnificent quest. She saved me from a solitary life on the run from the organization. 
I will never forget her kindness. Mayuri doesn't have to be useful. Her being here is enough. So, did Alpaca Man say anything? Yeah, then that. No? Nothing. The human faced Alpaca inside the monitor was completely unresponsive. So unresponsive, you think the game was bugged. Whatever, I give up. Never again will I play this boring game. <laughs> Damn anti-social alpaca. Hate it when the alpaca are anti-social. I curse his name and smack the TV. As soon as I do, hmm? the TV makes it sound like a shortage, and then the screen goes blank. I change the channel. Nothing. Check the power cable. Nothing. Whack it again. Nothing. I guess it's broken. This crummy TV is on lease from the broad tube workshop downstairs. It's probably just old. You made Mr. Alpaca angry. <laughs> Damn. I'll have to get it repaired later. I turn off the TV and lay down on the couch. Lie down. The couch. I'm fed up with the humidity of Je Japanese summers. I stare at a conspicuous stand on the ceiling while fanning myself. I hit shift. I close my eyes. And what naturally comes to mind is that impossible scene I saw an hour ago. They're gone. As I left Radicon, everyone vanished before my eyes. I can't explain it. And it wasn't just the people on the street. The people in the stores, gone. And all the restaurants, gone. Even the cars vanished, drivers and all. And it all happened in the blink of an eye. Suddenly, an empty city spread before me. I could still hear the music from the stores, but those catchy melodies were the only sounds of life remain remaining. Heat was rising from the asphalt in waves, but I only felt a cold chill down my spine. I just stood there, breathless, until... What's wrong? Mayuri's voice brought me back to reality. Mayuri hadn't disappeared. She was right there, looking at me with questioning eyes. Everyone disappeared just now, right? You saw it too, right? Just now. Before our very eyes. Panic took hold as the enormity of what had just happened struck me. Unable to control myself, I grabbed my area by her slender shoulders and shook her. Did you see it, Mayuri? You saw it, right? <laughs> Is that the sound of my shape? <laughs> Mayuri's head fought back and forth from my shaking. <laughs> I didn't see anything. You didn't? Whoa! I stopped shaking her and looked straight into her eyes. She returned my gaze with eyes clear as glass marbles. You saw nothing? Nothing at all? There were people here a second ago, weren't there? There were? Even the store employees are gone. That's impossible by any measure. Of course they are. Her reply didn't make any sense. It was like this when we got here. Oh, I know. You're seeing things, aren't you? I'm sure it's because of the heat. How could she laugh at a time like this? I always thought she was a bit strange, but maybe her brain is actually broken. 
I realized that she couldn't help me. With nowhere else to turn, I looked up at the bright blue sky. There wasn't a cloud in sight. The scorching summer sun shone bright through the gaps between Akiva's buildings. Naturally, my eyes drifted to the top floor of Ratty Company, where I had just been moments before. A huge ass satellite now. Hey, he said not a cloud in the sky. What are those? Lying to us. There it was. An enormous machine like some kind of satellite embedded in the roof of the building. Where, not five minutes before, I had found Makise Kurusu's body in a pool of blood. What happened to her? Just before everyone else disappeared, I could have sworn I heard an ambulance siren. Makise Kurusu might still be in that dark narrow passageway. Cold, bloody, and alone. The thought disturbed me, but the question at the forefront of my mind was... What the hell is that satellite doing there? Right before Dr. Nakabachi's presentation, the building had shook like a bomb had exploded. The roof door lock had been broken, and beyond it, someone had placed a satellite-like machine, shrouded in smoke and glowing dust. When I first saw it, the satellite was on the rooftop. That's not what I was seeing now. This satellite had penetrated the top floor of the building, obliterating the room where Dr. Nakabachi's press conference had been held. It must have fallen out of orbit without burning up in the atmosphere somehow. I knew it was crazy, but what other explanation could there be? The real question was, when did it happen? Mayuri. Mayuri, about that satellite, <sighs> yep, what a surprise, huh? What do you mean? What was a surprise? It made a huge kaplow sound. Big ol' kaplow. A huge kaplow. It certainly did make a sound. But I don't think it was a kaplow. I'd say it was more like a zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
I checked online for any news. I'll keep going for a little bit longer until we get to like a maybe a slight better stop the fire. The net is buzzing about the mysterious machine that crashed into Roddy Khan. All of the major stations in Tokyo, even two TV, are running special bulletins about it. I somehow turned on auto. I don't know how. Whoops. Okibar Station is jammed with reporters and curious onlookers. Nobody has mentioned anything about the disappearance of thousands of people from Akiba's streets, nor about Makise Kurisu's murder. It's all a mystery. A mystery? So I see. So that's it. From the sofa, I sprung to my feet, a wide grin on my face. Daru and Mayuri returned at stare. This is all an elaborate cover-up by the organization. Their influence has corrupted local law enforcement, which means our entire government may already be under their control. My god. But they underestimated me. For I am not one so easily played. One day, I will expose their deeds and put an end to their reign. Having come to a satisfactory conclusion, I take a celebratory bottle of Dr. P, my favorite soda, from the fridge. The lab has no air conditioning. Ice cold drinks are essential. I can, I can respect it. Ah, you lecture, you <laughs> elixir elixir intellectualis, a drink fit for a genius. Cola no hoga yokune. Cola's better. Okarin wa honto ni Doctor Pepper san ga daiski da yo ne. Okarin, he loves his Doctor P. Kono chiteki inryo no yosa ga wakaranai yatsu wa jinsei no kobun no ichi o sonshite iru. I pity the man who knows not the greatness of this <laughs> beverage. <laughs> I read ahead too fast sometimes. <laughs> okay. Since we're back to like being explained, I think I'm gonna go ahead and save here and pick this up next time I stream. Uh, the next for sure stream. Next for for sure stream will be probably next Friday. Uh, in line with you, television all Fridays. Uh, we'll have time throughout the week or on the weekend, and I'm feeling it. I'll probably be back online. Maybe back with more of this, maybe back with something else. Uh, but more streams to come now that I have everything set back up again. So, if anything, I will see you again next Friday. I hope you will come and watch and enjoy. Uh, for this is one of my favorite anime, and I am enjoying the vision level so far. It's a little, little less interactive than, say, uh, something like, uh, what are they called? The Nonary Games? Or the game I recently streamed in... I can't even think of the name right now. AI The Somnium Files, that was super interactive, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so I kind of wish this had more interactivity to it, but... It's still a good read. So I will see you next Friday at the latest. So I hope you have a good night.